Here are 21 essential settings that small channels must adjust, or risk staying small forever. The first setting is in the video details section and is the publish to subscription feed and notify subscribers option. If your channel covers a variety of topics, for instance, Fortnite and maybe Spider-Man content, make sure you disable this feature. If your channel focuses on a single niche, you can leave this enabled to help your video gain initial traction with interested subscribers. The next setting doesn't directly impact the algorithm but addresses human psychology. How many times have you watched a video and noticed a low like count and decided to swipe away? You feel guilty now, don't you? It's normal for viewers to be discouraged by the number of likes a video has and judge it as a bad video. So, in the details section, uncheck the show how many viewers like this video box. After your video has gained some traction, you can make the count visible to show social proof and encourage further engagement. Moving on to the third setting, automatic chapters. I know you might be thinking, why shouldn't I leave this on? And isn't it just the easier option? Yes, it's easier, but it's generated by YouTube's AI which may not always be accurate and could potentially hurt your video's retention and overall watch time. For a better viewer experience, manually add timestamps in your video's description. This will ensure that your chapters are accurately segmented and useful for your audience. Setting 4 is your video license. Most creators don't really know the difference and just leave it on standard, but they're missing out on potential opportunities with the Creative Commons license. Applying this license to your videos allows other creators to reuse and remix your content which can help expand your reach and, in essence, is free advertising. Speaking of reusable content, you should also enable the Shorts Remix feature to allow other creators to remix your YouTube Shorts. Similar to the previous setting, this can be a powerful way to increase your content's visibility, as the remix will still link back to your original video. Setting 6 is all about giving the algorithm more information about your videos, so it can recommend them to the right audience, and it is video category. Choosing the right category for each of your videos is crucial, and helps improve your video's discoverability. The next setting is to specify whether your content is made for kids or not. And to help you with this decision, use this analogy. Just because Marvel movies appeal to a lot of kids doesn't mean they were made for them. When you talk about content made for kids, it's content like Coco Melon and the likes, so choose accordingly. Be truthful with this information, as it can affect monetization, and violating YouTube's policies will lead to further punishment. This setting is also required for monetization and security. Make sure to activate the two-step verification feature. Speaking of verification, like and subscribe so I can get verified. You don't want to spend so much time and resources growing a channel only to lose it to some hacker. The next isn't necessarily a setting, but a feature you get from one of your settings. Go to the customization tab and copy your channel's URL. Add question mark sub underscore confirmation equal to one to your URL and go to a URL shortening website, such as tinyurl, and paste this edited URL. Add an alias, a text you want to use for the link's name, and hit shorten. Now you can copy this new link and paste it in your channel's links in the branding tab of customization. When you've done this, anyone who presses this link will be taken to your channel's home page and get a pop-up asking whether they want to subscribe. You can include it in your video's descriptions or pinned comments. There's even a setting that automatically puts descriptions for your videos, so stick around till the end. The next four settings are generally grouped under branding and can help you gain subscribers without even uploading videos. First, make sure you upload a channel banner that's clear and concise. Contrary to what many believe, a good number of your subscribers actually comes from your home page. So this banner is often the first impression new visitors have of your channel. Ensure it's visually appealing and clearly communicates what your channel is about in 5 seconds, or if you're Mr. Beast. Subscribe for a cookie. The second is to add a video watermark to your videos. Make sure to upload a clear image for your watermark and choose when it shows on your videos or if it's throughout your entire video. When viewers press this watermark, even accidentally, they are prompted to subscribe, and if they're already enjoying your content, congratulations. The next aspect under branding is your channel description. Write a compelling channel description that communicates what your channel offers and why viewers should subscribe, but ensure all necessary information is within the first line. When viewers visit your channel page, the first line is the only visible aspect, and if it resonates with them, they will likely subscribe. The final aspect is to set up featured sections on your channel homepage. This is also a viewer psychology card. When viewers see your homepage looking full, they will treat your channel as if it's a big channel. Another advantage is that featured sections help make viewers watch multiple videos, and once the algorithm notices this, it will recommend even more to them. Setting 14. It's best to configure the default visibility for new videos to unlisted until you're ready to publish them. This allows time for both YouTube to finish processing your videos and understand what they're about, and for you to review and make final edits before your content goes live. You also don't want to mistakenly upload a personal video, but what you do want to do is to hit the like and subscribe buttons down here.
Settings 15 through 18 cover default upload settings. Basically ways to make all uploads automatically use the settings that we covered earlier in this video and even more. The first is default description, and you can use it to put in things like links, courses, etc. This is how big channels are able to always achieve that professional looking description. 16 is channel tags. This isn't so important, but I believe it's another way of giving the algorithm more information about your channel. Just make sure you don't overstuff unrelated keywords. For 17, if we move over to the advanced settings tab, we'll see where to put our video's language and also where to set some of the earlier settings we covered as our default upload settings. The final setting of this section isn't in the advanced settings of the upload default tab, but the advanced settings of the channel tab. And it gives the ability to set your channel as made for kids or not. In the community tab lies setting 19, which is blocked words and block links. Use this setting to block out spam or offensive comments, and also links which can spoil your channel's reputation. Add default keywords to your channel to improve search optimization and make it easier for viewers to find your channel and content. Effective use of keywords can significantly enhance your video's discoverability on the platform. Setting 21 isn't really a setting but a feature you should be using. Make sure you use end screens and cards as they 1. Help to increase session time, and 2. Guide the algorithm to recommend that particular video to viewers after watching one of your videos. If you want to take your channel even further and make the algorithm fully work for you, click this video on screen, and I'll see you there.